Yeah. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, recapping a little bit from last Saturday. Uh, just uh, really pleased with the guys' uh, uh, focus and, and uh, effort and staying engaged through uh, the delays we had, the delay to start the game, uh, to shrinking our warm-ups and um, you know, handling the adversity of, uh, of the first break that I, I didn't realize how long it was, but it was almost close to an hour, uh, not quite, but it was close to an hour to be able to come back out and make some plays and then go back in at halftime and um, continue to, to keep our focus and not let our guard down and um, played really good football in, in some tough, in, tough conditions, tough environment uh, with, the, with the ball being so wet, but uh, um, was happy we were able to control the line of scrimmage and uh, we were able to make some plays uh, on defense uh, with turnovers, and uh, that uh, helped get us some short fields. And we got to capitalize more on some of the short fields that we got from an offensive standpoint. Uh, but uh, once again, they were playing a lot of cover zero and, and just getting everybody up in the box uh, to try to assuming and knowing that it was hard to throw the football. And then we popped a couple runs. So that was big to see. And uh, excited about getting that win and, and moving on. But. Now we've got a really good Tulane team coming in here. They're 2-0, uh, playing well. Got a ton of respect for Coach Fritz, known him for a long time. And uh, they've got really, really good players. And I think they got a really good quarterback. And uh, obviously, they can really uh, run and have some really good athletes on both sides of the ball. You alluded to kind of having to operate through multiple delays, one pretty long. Uh, what kind of goes into the – do you – plan that pregame or did you just kind of put in coach true's hands no we kind of planned it out on friday and, and saturday of what would happen what could happen you never know how long they're going to be but whether that's um you know it's it's a benefit of being at home when those things happen because uh, a couple players got another chance to get more treatment during that time and whether it was getting a stem getting uh, ice doing whatever getting warm back up to uh, having having snacks and and food and beverages and uh, then going into the weight room and having that uh, you know turf area to stretch out and kind of not be crammed into a locker room I think uh, those things are all uh, a benefit and then uh, just continuing to meet with the guys and talk about okay here's the next uh, part of the game plan here's here's an adjustment we're going to make and just always trying to keep them engaged and not let them just hang out for 45 minutes. Here that the most improvement sometimes happens from game one to game two. Did you feel that way? Or is there any specific areas where you feel that way? Um, no, it, it's a probably hard thing to gauge because of the weather. Uh, I, I was pleased with uh, how hard we're playing right now on both sides of the ball. We're playing really hard, and it's making up for some of the uh, alignment errors, mental errors maybe that we're having. Uh, we, we've blown a coverage to, um, you know, maybe uh, having a false start, whatever. Um, we're playing hard enough to overcome some of those things, but we have a lot of things to clean up in all three phases from a technique standpoint. In light of what the offense has done the first two games, is, is there a need to maybe prove to yourselves you can throw the ball with some consistency? Well, just wanting the opportunity to do it more than anything. I don't know if it's, it's proving it. It's just... Uh, um, you know, just didn't do it in the first game because we were, like we had talked about, trying to save some things back and uh, had a lot of good things on the card. Uh, Coach Klein did. And just um, I, it was going to be hard to get to him uh, with as much uh, rain as we had and, and as heavy as the ball was. And so um, I'm still excited about some of the things that we are going to do in the passing game. I think you saw glimpses of it on the first two drives when it was uh, dry out there. And we were able to, I thought Adrian did a really nice job of coming to a maybe a third progression uh, off his reads and finding Malik uh, a couple times. But uh, yeah, we're just, in my mind, scratching the surface of what we're going to be able to do throwing the football. And after going back and watching the film, uh, how good was the defense? It, it was really good. Now, we were fortunate. Uh, they missed. They misfired on a couple of deep balls that uh, we have to uh, have a little bit better technique on. Uh, but uh, we were able to um, s really slow down the run, and that was so critical for us because that's what makes them really go is if they can run the football, then it sets up their shot play action things. And we were able to um, do a great job with tackles for loss and putting some pressure on the quarterback that uh, made him throw it a little bit early. Um, had a couple of really big interceptions. Uh, Kobe made a, a great play. It was an underthrown ball, but that was part of the weather, part of the um, the elements, and he made a play on it. I thought Sincere made a great play. 
Um, Nick and, and Deuce were in the right place at the right time. Deuce really made a heck of a play just spying the quarterback and making a great catch. And, um, you know, when you have when you turn the ball over, I don't know if it was three or four possessions in that uh, third or fourth quarter, um, really can change the momentum, and it, and it definitely did. And schematically, both sides of the ball, what does Tulane present? Uh, offensively, a lot more RPO stuff. Um, quarterback that really can sling it around, and he's a good athlete that can run. They they have a number of receivers and tight ends that um, uh, can beat you with their speed, athleticism. Uh, the RPO game is something that we have to be really alert to. And then on, on defense, probably the multiple fronts that they can get into, different pressure looks. Um, one thing that's, that's challenging uh, is – we have two games to go off of from off of from this year that not, are not competitive games, and so we have to dig a little bit deeper to find some other games because I I don't think they probably showed a whole lot in those first two games. How much of a confidence boost do you think it'll be for Adrian whenever he does hit that first long pass of the season? Uh, it'll be uh, I think uh, as much of a relief that's over with. Let's just go play football um, and uh, getting the right conditions and saying, okay, let's just let's just throw it around a little bit more out of some open sets. And um, people are going to continue to try to stop number 22. And so uh, people are going to continue to put more people uh, near the line of scrimmage. And if they don't, then we're going to nickel and dime them in the throwing game and let Deuce run wild. But uh, um, we're believing that people are going to have to play less uh, deep coverage and, and more. Uh, and Missouri did that late. They just said, we're going to play cover zero most of the time. And, and they either hit us for a, um, not necessarily a tackle for a loss, but maybe got the ball out of Adrian's hands quickly, uh, maybe knocked us down for a yard, or you saw what you saw where if, if we bust through that early line or first part of the line, it's going to be a big play. So I'm excited for us to continue to improve on it. And part of it is good. We've had really now three weeks uh, of practice uh, with uh, Adrian and the wide receivers, tight ends and back. So we're getting a lot of work in and it's going to, it's going to pay off. You remember the first time uh, seeing Kobe Savage on, on tape or live when you realized he was going to be an impact guy? Loved his, his uh, junior college tape. And uh, got a chance to visit with him pretty quickly uh, after watching the tape and, and offered him when he was on a bus trip uh, uh, at Tyler and just loved his personality and his demeanor. And then when he came up on his visit, I just knew he was the right kind of guy, uh, the right fit, the right maturity. Uh, he loves ball. He's an absolute football junkie. He just hangs out in the offices and um, is a sponge to learn more and more. And uh, kid plays reckless and he has fun. You know Willie Fritz at all? And yeah, I know Will Willie. Well, okay, can you tell us about that, and what do you think about him? Well, um, Willie was at Sam Houston State when I was at North Dakota State, so um, I was uh, the defensive coordinator at the time, but uh, had really good battles with him. Uh, so much respect for Willie, what he did at uh, Central Missouri for, for so long, and then going down to Sam Houston and, and turning that program into a, uh, a perennial power in FCS. He went to Georgia Southern and did some really good things, and had an opportunity to go to Tulane. The athletic director at Tulane is a really good friend of mine, Troy Dannon. Um, Troy made a great hire in Willie. And uh, so much respect for Coach Fritz. I see him at different conventions and things. And, and uh, um, he's doing a, a terrific job down there, and he's a winner. Is that knowledge that you have of Coach Fritz any benefit, given that it's a little bit dated, uh, might be a two-way street, and they've got a yeah, new offense. Yeah, we're both so different from when it was at Sam Houston and North Dakota State uh, with what they do offensively and defensively, what we do offensively and defensively. Uh, once again, I wasn't the head coach at the time, um, but uh, just just tons of respect for uh, the quality of a man he is and the quality of a program that he runs. And how would you evaluate the secondary and the defense as a whole? Preventing giving up uh, big plays so far. You know, last week was huge for us, and and I know the the weather played into that. We only gave up two explosives on uh, explosives on defense. We had nine on offense. That was a a big win for us to, in the explosive play battle. You know, you have that, and you and I think we were plus three in the turnover margin, and we had a um, a big play on special teams. You, you do those three things with explosive plays and. Um, turnover margin and, an ex and, and a dynamic play on special teams, you, you should be successful. And how is Hayden Gilliam, Gilliam played in his short window? He's playing really well and gaining more and more confidence uh, with the more reps he gets. Um, you know, he's, he's a great communicator. 
uh, another guy that uh, just has a blast, whether it's at practice, whether it's in a meeting. Uh, I can just see him sitting over there in the corner uh, during a punt meeting or he just has fun. He loves football and he loves this, uh, the, loves this team and he's playing at a high level. You mentioned earlier, Coach, that uh, to get more information on Tulane, might have to look at some games made from last year. But those games looking at last year, is it taken into consideration that Tulane all of last year was affected by Hurricane Ida? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. But but sometimes the schemes aren't, you know, um, you know whether or not, uh, uh, you know, you don't look and, and say what was their record or anything like that. You look and see what was the scheme, what was where were they having success. Uh, the guys that are returning, what positions were they playing that they had comfort in? Um, both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, I know they have a new offensive coordinator, um, so we watch some of his stuff from from his previous uh, job as well. I mean, it's just trying to um, come up with a plan A and a plan B, and making sure that um, uh, we can um, play fast and play physical. Two guys we haven't seen yet are Sean Robinson and Will Honus. I was just wondering if you had an update on those guys. Yeah, we're getting closer probably on both of them. Uh, I don't have a definitive timetable on either one of them, um, but um, uh, we're hopefully getting closer. And then now that you've seen Khalid Duke back from his injury two games in, how would you kind of assess his health and his play? Well, he's healthy, uh, which is, is fun to see and fun for him to be healthy. He just needs to continue to get reps at the linebacker spot compared to where he's played here in the past at defensive end. I, I saw uh, a guy from game one to game two uh, gain a lot of confidence in uh, his alignments and his uh, disguises and his ability to see the plays happen faster. Uh, it's going to just continue to click for him at the outside linebacker spot. He's a dynamic player, guys, and he, he reeks – wrecks shop in there when he comes and, and fills on a hole or blitzes. I mean, it, it's a it's a grown man coming in there. And uh, I, I'm excited because Khalid's best football is still coming uh, as he gets more comfortable. One last thing for me. Um, offense last game felt like start er, early in the first half, Deuce really didn't get to a breakthrough. But then yeah. in the second half, you started to wear him down. Is that something that you've kind of going to hang your hat on with this offense here? Um, no, it was the conditions. I mean, we were going to, um, I think, be a lot more open and, and pitch it around a lot more until uh, until the rain came. And Deuce would have been a part of that as well. And then, you know, we got up 20 to 6, and it was soaking wet and a downpour. And then it's, all right, let's, uh, let's not turn the football over. Um, let's uh, give it to Deuce. Plus, with the amount of pressure we were seeing, we did not want to take sacks. We didn't want to take a bunch of negative plays. And um, another guy that was really, really good on Saturday was Ty Zentner. And, uh, um, you know, a few of his punts were, were really good. They didn't have any return yardage. He pinned a couple of them inside the five, and, and that those were big. Ty's, Ty's kicking the ball really well. To follow up on the run game a little bit there, um, DJ Giddens, I think, only had one or two carries on Saturday. Are you confident in what you guys have behind Deuce in your rushing attack at this point? Yeah, um, we are. And uh, um, DJ is going to be a big factor. It's just I'll, I'll keep going to it. Um, you know, when a guy's warm and playing all the time and not sitting on the sidelines soaking wet, um, you're going to give it to the guy that's your guy, for starters, as well as – you know, it's, it's hard. You know, I, I feel bad for Anthony. You know, he sat cold all game long and got wet and, and, he, and he didn't hang on to the football. That's not Anthony Frias. Anthony's going to be fine. Uh, he's beating himself up too much. We, we've got a lot of belief in Anthony. And I just didn't want to do the same thing to, to DJ. Um, Deuce is fresh. He's warm. He's, he's carrying the, the load. He's a pretty good football player. And, um, you know, DJ was an impact, had an impact, though. He had a big run for us. Obviously, you – are confident in Deuce, right, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. But behind that, is it important to develop a significant amount of depth at running back just in case something yeah, happens? Absolutely. Happen? And DJ Giddens is the clear number two for us. Did you notice any any major difference with, with, with Josh Hayes being back there in the secondary? Huge difference. You know, and that's just that's not a an indictment on any of our other players. It's just a guy that's a, a, a six year guy um, that has seen. 40 plus games of football as opposed to younger players that have not seen a whole lot of football. And so to get Josh back there from a leadership standpoint, from 
uh, ability to play man coverage, and and then I think everybody saw his ability to to you know fill the alley and run and, and hit. That's what I that's what I know of of Josh 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 Hayes. So I was excited to get him back, and you know guys like Kendra and and. Uh, uh, VJ Payne are going to continue to grow and learn from from Josh, and they're still going to have an impact. But it's different when you got a six year guy. It's been kind of a quiet first couple of games for for Echo. Is that is that more of a, a function of teams not throwing in, in, in his part of the field, or you know, I think it's going to get really busy um, over the landscape of the Big Twelve season, and. Um, uh, and probably this week because these guys are going to throw it around with a really good quarterback. So I think he and Julius will will really be challenged. I, I know they're both um, excited to be challenged in the, in the um, coming part of the season. But uh, maybe right now it's just uh, they've been doing a really good job of, of keeping their depth on things and not a lot of time to throw the football and people are throwing underneath. But uh, those guys know it's coming. Your, your defense players obviously are having fun. They're, they're throwing up the mob sign. How have you seen this team, this defense, maybe demonstrate that mob mentality that you talk about? Just you know, for us, that's mind on the ball, mind on ball, and those guys are are flying to the football, and that's that's the kind of tenacity and, and physicality and and uh, excitement and energy we want to have, and I think that's so critical to. Uh, to our success is, you know, they get they they run if there's loafs on the field and and they don't and they get passed up by a teammate and stuff. I and mean, we chart all that stuff and and those guys uh, are excited for each other when they make a play. And so um, we got to continue to to build depth on the defensive side and we have to continue to, tr to try to eliminate some of the technique errors we have. Uh, but once again, the the tenacity and speed and physicality that those guys are playing with makes up for a lot of it. Defensive line, how do you feel like uh, they're performing, especially the, the pass rush with the three guys? Yeah, um, we're, we're rotating a lot of guys in there. Brendan Mott played really well. Um, Felix and Nate are always going to play well and mainstays in there. I thought Pick did some really good things in there. Um, one of the guys that, um, uh, you know, he backs up Eli, but I thought D. Hintz played really well and was very, very disruptive. And it helped us to get Eli out of there some. Eli made a great play on a screen play for a tackle for loss. But having having D hints and having a fresh, healthy D wasn't healthy last year. Having a fresh, healthy D uh, really helps uh, Eli in there as well. So um, we're playing a lot of guys, which is which is really good. And, and all those guys are having production. Were you seeing this coming out of Brendan Mott? Um, I saw it in the in the spring. As far as we didn't have any of those defensive linemen, he was maybe he and Cody stuffed me might have been the only two we had, and and uh, Titus Tuiaso. Well, those are the only three we really had, and so he got to go against Biebs and KT uh, Carver Liney, and then uh, I, I saw him get stronger uh, and and get more explosive in the summer, and um, uh, earned a scholarship over the summer and. Um, the fact that he's solidly in the rotation, in the mix, and, and playing a lot of snaps, and um, there's not much of a downfall when he goes in the game. He's he's a productive guy, and he keeps Nate fresh. He keeps Felix fresh, and uh, I'm excited for him because he's earned everything he has here. He came in here maybe about 208 pounds or not very much, and now he's about 245 and, and uh, really explosive. Overall, how, how would you assess – the offensive line with with Hadley in there as opposed to Taylor. Yeah, it was uh, obviously really good. We rushed the ball uh, extremely well. Um, we we have to find more snaps for uh, line gang, probably for Carver, uh, and then uh, either Dawson or Sam Hacked uh, have to continue to to provide a little bit more depth for us. We didn't rotate uh, probably as as much as we should have on the offensive line. Part of that is same thing we keep talking about, the elements and getting the guys that have been playing in the, those elements out there to keep them there. But uh, we have to do a, a continue to emphasize uh, uh, playing more guys there. I guess I'll ask finally about Uso. Uh, it just seems like he's getting a little bit better yeah. each week. He is. He's learning how to play uh, in our system and in, in our front. Once again, learning from Eli has been huge for him. He, he does not stay blocked in there. He plays really hard. 
Uh, his best football is in front of him this year. He's going to be a factor. Back to what Fritch asked about a moment ago, Coach, what your personality is through two games, how do you want that to, I guess, grow through the regular season? What What is it you're still – trying to pull out of this defense? Um, you guys need to figure that out, probably. And we need to see if anybody else can figure that out. Um, because we are doing some different things that maybe somebody that doesn't see us all the time thinks it's a lot of the same as what we did last year. Um, but uh, we're doing a lot a lot of different things than what we've done. And, and I'm excited to see us continue to grow and evolve. At Jordy's event a little bit on Sunday, yep. and I, again, I have an idea how you'll answer this, but why does every football team need an Austin Moore? <laughs> uh, I wish we had 15 Austin Moores, and we're getting closer to having 15 Austin Moores. Guys that come in and just keep quiet, walk on kid, work his tail off, um, was on the scout team the entire freshman year. A lot of freshmen hate the scout team. Uh, which I don't blame them. I mean, it's hard work. You get beat up down there. Uh, but it's, it's you know, how do you handle your circumstance? And that was a circumstance that Austin had. And when we'd come in here on Sunday morning, I'd say, who'd be the scout team defensive player of the week? And every week, Connor Riley could have said Austin Moore. And we spread it around with a lot of guys that year. Uh, but Austin could have been the could have been the guy every week. And um, he played hard every, every play. And... Um, he uh, got himself an opportunity to, to back up uh, Fletch and didn't complain that Fletch was playing 60 plays and he was playing 10. We played him on some special teams. He got beat on a couple of teams. We replaced him. Then we put him back on, never complained, and earned himself the, the starting job this year, and he's one of our most productive players. You've been here long enough. You know, every coach has the battle with it, but is. Have you had to say anything about the tendency to maybe peak to next week with Oklahoma? No way. We can't. We're, we're not good enough to do that. Tulane's too good a football team to do that. Um, you know, we talked about this before we played South Dakota, and I appreciate our upperclassmen, our senior six-year guys, uh, talking to me and talking to the team about it's about us, not about the opponent. And I was that, was, that showed me great maturity by those guys to say, Coach, we don't need to tell you, have you tell us anything about what South Dakota's like. It's about us. We don't need to have you tell us what Missouri's like. We all know who the opponents are. It's about us and our preparation. And these guys know it. There are no shortcuts to success. If you prepare mentally, physically, it gives you an opportunity to be successful on Saturday. Do you win? Depends how you execute. But if you don't prepare mentally and physically, everybody can get beat in college football. Chris, you guys have teased on social media that you might be wearing something new this weekend. I didn't what, know that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you say uh, now is the right time for that? Um, uh, Al Serby's in charge. I let Al have the room. Al was awesome. And um, I think it's going to be unveiled this afternoon probably. Something that uh, uh, Al and I have been visiting about and um, – uh, some of it is uh, supply and demand and shipping and receiving. And um, everything seemed to go as planned for Al, and so this was the time to do it. Pretty simple there, huh, Kellis? <laughs> Coach, we asked about special teams last week, but again, another special teams touchdown. Frankly put, why is K-State so good at special teams? The amount of time we put in on it and how important it is to the Austin Moores and – Seth Porters and and Tom Helton and Ty Bowman's and I could Shane I could go on and on about these guys Nick Allen that it's so important to those guys and I, I just I just go back to last spring when we had no D linemen and we had our team going on on one end and we had long snappers and kickers playing D end and D tackle and linebacker trying to give a look for our offense. And myself and a couple other coaches took every young player that we didn't know would have a role on offense and defense this year and said, we're going down on the other end and spending upwards of 30 minutes a day just doing drill work and hoping it would carry over. And I look at a kid like Desmond Purnell, who is having a huge impact on special teams. He had the block of the whole thing on punt 
last week, and we talk about it a lot, but that ball was kicked, and, and we thought we had hooked up everybody, but the one guy we were worried about was the, the shield player that's supposed to keep everybody inside him. Desmond Purnell blocked him from the time the ball was kicked until it got into the end zone and did not let that kid outside on contain. And why was that important? Because, Des, that was your job only on this play. And there's times where the ball was kicked out of bounds and Des blocked that kid until the ball was kicked out of bounds. And that's an unselfish kid. And if you want to be really good on special teams, you've got to be unselfish. Does that attitude come from the coaching staff or does that attitude come from the players on those units? All, all of all of the above. You know, uh, we have a special teams meeting in here every day. Um, I never will miss a special teams meeting. I'll always interact and get involved because I think it's really important that the that the players see that the head coach is involved in special teams. I'm involved in the drill work, uh, help the design and scheme in it with, with Coach Burnham. Um, you have to show the importance of it. And our guys, trust me, you ask those older guys, they know how important it is because – it can change the momentum of the game. And it did in the first game against South Dakota, and it absolutely did coming off of that break. To stop them, they kick it, and it's 20 to 3. I mean, it just, and the crowd was phenomenal on Saturday through the delays and stuff, but that was as loud as I had heard it there in a long time. Coach, I get to be that guy today. Your uh -oh. name's being linked with the Nebraska job. <laughs> Thoughts? Um, for starters, Scott Frost is a friend of mine. Um, I hate to see it uh, because uh, I just that's part of the profession. I don't know what's going on at, at Nebraska or what has gone on. I've talked to Scott a few times during his time there, but uh, um, I really like it here at Kansas State. I love our players, love our, our guys, and um, pretty simple for me. I can just say one name, and that's Gene Taylor. Gene's my guy. Oh, you're talking switches earlier on defense. Uh, last year it was pretty much Echo Boydo playing the field and yep. Prince playing the boundary. Mm -hmm. Seen a little bit of a mix on that. What's been that philosophy? Yeah. Part, of, part of it is tempo because when an offense is going fast, you don't want those guys adding an extra 600 yards on their legs. Um, and part of it is um, Echo's that much more experienced into the boundary. Um, and we want to get Julius's length to the field sometimes. And I think Coach Malone does a great job of mixing that up, not always the left, not always the right, not always the field, not always the boundary. Um, I'm excited for, for Omar Daniels. Omar Daniels came in and played limited snaps but made a couple of huge plays. Uh, so we, we're gaining depth there as well at, at corner. So um, we'll keep moving those guys around, make it hard for people to figure out where they're at. Thanks, everyone.